For the past nine months, outside of work in my free time, I've been designing a bionic hand. I've made some pretty good progress with it and wanted to share where I'm at and also give a bit of background behind this project. Way back in 2014, I designed and built a 3D printed bionic hand for my final year of university. I learned a lot doing this project, especially about mechanical design. And as you can see, each finger was actuated by a motor in the forearm. The wrist could rotate and the elbow could rotate, giving a total of seven degrees of freedom. I even used EMG sensors to use my muscles to control the movement of the bionic hand. And this is typically how an amputee may control a bionic hand they're fitted with. Even though the design came out pretty reasonable, it had a few issues that prevented it from being a good bionic arm to attach to an amputee. The first one was that a lot of the components were 3D printed on an FDM printer, and because of the layering, they were quite weak. So I was fearful that an amputee would break the arm relatively easily in day-to-day -day life. The second issue was that the thumb only had one degree of freedom, so it could only open and close in one direction and didn't have much mo mobility. In this image here, you can see the thumb and the index finger holding a pen, but this wouldn't be possible between the thumb and the large finger or ring finger, for example. The final issue was that the motors were housed inside the forearm, which is actually quite common for a lot of commercially available bionic arms, but it means that a person that's only lost their hand can't really make use of a design like this. So this is where I'm at with the design of the new bionic hand. I want it to be more durable, more compact, and also have more mobility. So I'm planning on using micro miniature motors in the palm and the thumb base, and the thumb will have three degrees of freedom. I'm also using a motor in the wrist, and the wrist will be able to rotate and flex. The fingers will be three joint linkage systems, and I'm still gonna use tendon driven systems, so I'm gonna have a tendon passing through a channel inside the finger, and when a motor tensions that, it's gonna close or flex the finger. And that flexion will be driven by pulleys, which will be attached to the motors in the palm. So this is one of the 3D printed pulleys I got. So these are actually 3D printed on an SLS powder printer, which has many benefits over an FDM printer. But I think I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Just as importantly, the finger will return to its extended position by an elastic in the back channel of the finger. So the motor can close the finger and when the motor's powered off, the finger will snap back to its extended position. So I think this actually has a lot of benefits and it's not something I did in my previous design. In the previous design, I actually had a loop, so a tendon loop. So when the finger was closed or opened, one of the tendons was being tensioned and one was being released. With the thumb, I wanted to give it as much mobility as possible. At a bare minimum, I wanted the thumb to be able to manoeuvre so that it could touch each finger individually. This kind of mobility is super important to complete complex and fine tasks naturally. And of course, the hand will be able to completely grip some kind of round object. The wrist will also be able to flex back and forth and it will also be able to rotate, which isn't common in commercial prosthetic arms. So at the moment, I have most of my off-the-shelf components purchased to build this, including these micro metal gear motors. So I have two types. I have a straight type and a U configuration type. In an upcoming video, I'll discuss why I needed these two different styles. And this is just showing the SLS printed pulley on the motor in action. I'll also discuss some of the benefits of SLS printing and why it's important in the future. And the next step is to begin assembling this unit. And I think what I plan to do is assemble and test in four or five different sections. And I'll make videos discussing the design and potential issues as they come up. And after that, I'll discuss the electronics and my plans for the software and control. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.